So, colleagues, if I can remind you to turn your videos off and your microphones off unless you call to speak, that would be fantastic. Um, and welcome everybody to the, I think this is the fifth virtual ward forum of the Bournemouth and Cottage Ward uh, since we've been through this incredibly difficult and challenging uh, time. Uh, so I'd like to welcome everyone to this and uh, say that um, I really, really appreciate you joining us this evening. It feels to me very much like a, a radio show. Um, welcome, Chris. Um, if we, we're asking everybody to turn their video, their video and their and their and their audio off unless they're called to speak. Um, so anybody joining us, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, and so. Uh, Welcome to the show. As I say, it feels a bit like a, a radio show. Uh, I used to present one of those in my student days, which was long ago, uh, but I really do enjoy this format. And um, but I recognise that some colleagues uh, do uh, are keen for us to get back to the uh, in-person meetings, but obviously we will do that when we believe it to be safe to do so, uh, and we'll keep everyone updated on that. Um, tonight's agenda, um, which hopefully everybody's been able to, to get sight of, um, it's uh, so the first thing actually before I even run through that is a welcome and notice of recording so I'm to advise residents listening or participating in the online meeting that a recording will be available for future record on the council's YouTube channel. So um, for, for anybody who's not been on YouTube yet, you will get to be a YouTube star perhaps by participating in our ward forum tonight. Um, our second item will be the Commonwealth Games Celebrating Communities Fund, uh, where we will hear the proposal pre pre presentations from the applicants and then take part in a participatory voting for the projects by those present. Uh, so this item will be facilitated by Karen Cheney from the Neighbourhood um, Networks team. Uh, and uh, Karen will take over the chair from me as a facilitator uh, once I've been through the agenda and done a, 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 a kind of introduction to the meeting. After we've done that item, we'll take roughly half an hour. After that, we will be given an update on COVID and the latest situation around the pandemic. Uh, and it's uh, spread in or, or, or in Birmingham uh, from Natalie Stewart, who is the senior a senior public health officer at Birmingham City Council. We have an update that I'll be giving from our local police team. Unfortunately, they've been unable to join tonight um, because um, they're not on 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 shift. Um, so they've sent us a report that I'll read out. Um, but again, uh, Councillor Clements and I have met with them recently, so we can take up any issues for colleagues um, with them after the meeting. Um, we'll then have an item on the climate emergency. Uh, and the council's response and we'll be joined by Maria Dunn, the head of development policy at uh, Birmingham City Council for that. Um, we've then got an update from Bourneville Village Trust, uh, our great partners on uh, all the work we do in, in the Bourneville area um, and who will be updating us uh, on what they're up to and that will be given by Cheryl Garvey, the head of community development at BVT. And then uh, finally, um, there'll be local updates uh, and councillor updates, so uh, Liz and I will update on a couple of a bit of the work we're doing in the ward, but also I will, um, if if, I, if there is a time, I will, uh, if there's any other organisations present that want to perhaps uh, tell people about what they're doing, then I'm very happy to take a few short statements at the end, should there be time. Uh, colleagues, uh, you can use the chat um, to, to write your views. Uh, please uh, you know, maintain usual kind of professionalism in the chat, put comments and questions in there. Uh, but, be, but again, um, please, um, yeah, particularly if you want them asked, asked by me to anybody, I'm very happy to do that. But please maintain a, a decorum in that chat. That would be great. Um, and if you wish to speak um, after the speak at any point, uh, please raise your hand. You'll then be unmuted by um, uh, one of the council officers supporting the meeting uh, once I've called you to speak. So um, all questions and comments through the chair, please, just to make it uh, work for everybody who attends. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and and thank you again for joining us. So. Um, I had to hand over to, to, to Karen Cheney uh, to take the first part of the meeting. Karen, welcome and thank you very much for joining us this evening. I think I hand over completely to you at this stage and I merely kind of join the audience uh, for, the, for the discussion. Yes, you become a, an important member of the participative decision making, Councillor Greenwood. Um, so uh, welcome. Uh, as, as uh, uh, I'd already been introduced, I'm Karen Cheney. I am the Head of Service for the Neighbourhood Development Support Unit and will just be facilitating this part of the meeting in relation to the uh, recommendations from the, the ward forum yourselves as uh, residents in terms of the two proposals that have come forward as part of round one of the Commonwealth Games. Uh, celebrating communities grants. I will um, talk at the end once we've gone through the process. There is a round two, so I'll pass on those 
that information then. We're trying to keep this bit unduly uncompli uncomplicated and as simple as possible. So in terms of the process, I would invite the, the two proposers for the two different projects to come forward and um, speak or present their um, what they want to want to do uh, for five minutes. There will then be an opportunity uh, for people to ask any questions. Uh, then it'll be the next person um, for that. Um, and then those uh, two proposers will be asked to uh, leave the meeting whilst the um, voting takes place. Again, that will be um, if at the, the time to put on cameras and uh, either put your hand up, use the hand uh, icon that's part of this or write in the chat. Uh, this is only open to uh, residents. I know we've got some other officers on, online uh, might be very useful for you to uh, listen to, but you're, you're not able to vote. If you are linked with that project, and I've noticed uh, Councillor Clements has already put in uh, in, in, the, in the chat, um, then you cannot vote for a project that you're directly uh, uh, involved in. Um, the Both projects have already been through um, an initial assessment by the Neighbourhood Development Support Unit, so they do meet the funding stream criteria. So that's already been done. This is just based on whether as a ward forum you feel that the, the proposals are good ones, uh, needed in the area and um, link to your um, your um, aspirations for the for the ward. Um, so the ward allocation for both rounds for Bourneville and Cotteridge is 22,200. Um, and uh, I will then go through individually the, the projects. Uh, are there any questions relating uh, to that before we start? Councillor Clements. Thanks, Karen. I think you've already partially answered this for me, but I just wanted to ask if I have to formally register my interest because I am a trustee of one of the applicant organisations. So can I, obviously I can't vote, but is it OK for me to stay in the meeting or do I need to dial out no, until this section no, is over? No, you don't need to dial out, um, just okay. so you won't be able to vote on that. And that's the um, uh, Friends of Bourneville Park, isn't it? That's right, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, just it's just formally noted so that it's yeah. transparent. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are uh, any more questions or are people quite uh, happy with the, the process? OK, so in terms of uh, introductions, I'm going to ask Joan to present first in terms of the proposal that's from the uh, Friends of Bourneville Park. So I'm going to hand it over to you, uh, Joan. Ooh, what's happening there? Um, well, I'm here somewhere. We can see you, Joan. You can see me. Fine. Right. Um, I'm, hello, everyone. And uh, it's good to be here. Um, I'm the uh, current chair of the Friends of Bourneville Park, and I have another colleague here, Colin Thomas, who's our treasurer. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, try something very brave. I'm going to try and um, share my screen with you uh, and show a very short slideshow to explain what we're aiming to do. So I'm opening the share tray. I think I need a window. So I'm clicking on window. And gosh, oh no, what happened there? I've lost it again. Um, where's my window going to? Here we are. I'm hoping in a minute. Uh -huh. I'm trying to share a window with you. 
Here it is. And in one minute, I should be able to start that. Everything seems a bit slow tonight. So I think I need to click on present. Joan, it should, should be that you can, uh, if you press on your presentation, it should then come up. Um, I've got it. I've got my screen. But you haven't, right? We can see your screen, Joan, so you're on the right track. Oh, right. Well, um, we've, we've rushed ahead <laughs> to my second slide, but never mind, um, because this is a good place to start. I want to explain um, our vision really for what might happen next year during the Games. Um, uh, Joan, Joan, it's Councillor Fred Gunrod here. I'm just coming in to say that we still can't see your screen. What we've got shared is your vision of the team screen. So rather than the uh, document that you, the presentation you want to give. So I don't know how to bring your, Sorry, you might have to unshare. What are you seeing? I'm not sure at all what you're seeing. So I'm seeing uh, as if uh, and, uh, the teams with everybody's name on who's present in the meeting. Oh, right. So That's I think what, what you have to do is unshare and then when you unshare. Go back into the little block, go I've into the little that. box with the arrow and it should, it'll say unshare on there. I've done that. Shall I open now, the share tray again? Yeah, and just just choose that presentation that you have. Right. Oh, are we there? That's it. Oh, yeah, we're there. We're there. Uh, at last. Right. <laughs> um, OK, so I'm starting off trying to give you some idea of our vision. We wanted to have something that would bring people together. And the idea we had was that we'd organise a local festival to coincide with the games. We want to support families and young people. And I think the pandemic has shown how important our green spaces are for maintaining our physical and mental health. Um, and, you know, families find the summer period quite difficult when many parents are working. So we want to be able to support them in part of that summer holiday period while the games are on. We also want to promote leisure opportunities in Bonneville Park, but we're very happy if that spreads to other green spaces in our area. We want to work with as many groups as possible so we can provide um, a festival for all ages and interests. So far, we have um, got commitments from various other groups. Um, we started off with Bourneville Hub because we've worked with them before and they're very keen to work with us and provide some activities. Um, also Eco Birmingham, who are based in Northfield, but do a lot of work in this area. The Bourneville Bowls Club want to join up with us. The University of Birmingham and Sally Manor are very enthusiastic about joining with us. We are looking for other groups to join with us so we can produce a programme that everyone in the ward can enjoy. So why do we need a thousand pounds now? Well, we need to create a base for our Commonwealth Games Festival by repairing this hut. It's over a hundred years old, a genuine bit of Bourneville heritage. Um, and it is in serious need of repair. If you approve our bid, in round two, we'll be submitting a fully costed bid that would cover the running costs of our festival, but this bid is purely for money to assist in the repairing of this hut and make it a suitable, safe and secure base where we can store equipment, where volunteers can store their personal property during events, and so on. We feel we really need to have that before we can move ahead. During the Games, our 
idea is that we're going to have a Getting Active Festival on the opening day or perhaps the weekend before. And that's to showcase local sports clubs and other cultural groups, as well as giving information about the games themselves, the ticketing, etc. We'd like to see events and activities every day throughout the games, building on existing successful um, activities that we and other groups are running. Um, we've got our forest school, for example, our tennis, our tai chi. Um, and ending, we'd like to end the, day, the festival on the Sunday afternoon of the, uh, the day before the final ceremony with a picnic and fun events accompanied by a carillon concert. Our legacy is going to be more than just a safe and secure shed. Um, we think this is an opportunity for us all to unite, to celebrate the games. It'll give support for children and families in the summer holiday period. It'll give us a better understanding, I hope, of our links with Commonwealth countries. And hopefully more visitors to the city are going to be coming to Bourneville and spending their money in our businesses. So that's got to be good. We like other groups to join us. So um, we here are our contact details. I'm sure that um, Karen and Kay will share them around if anyone would like to be part of this. Our idea is to produce a programme to show um, what's on, which will go to every house in the uh, ward. So um, that's our idea, but a lot of our plans you won't be able to hear until later. Right now, we're just simply asking you for help in restoring our 100-year-old hut. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Do you want to unshare your screen, but stay on your camera, just in case there are any questions? OK. So it's an opportunity for those who are there uh, in the meeting to ask uh, Joan, and I'm sorry, I've forgotten your colleague's name. Colin. Colin, sorry, Colin. Um, whether people have got any questions. Oh, Joan, I think you might have got off lightly there. There don't appear to be any questions. It's, it's, not, it's not a trick question, uh, but it was very clear. So um, I think people will be um, uh, happy with that. Um, OK, thank you. You can um, turn your camera off, Joan, for, for the moment. Thank yeah. you. And the next proposal is from uh, Tom Poole from the Silly Oak Community Development Trust Limited. Uh, would you like to put your camera on, Tom? OK, Councillor Grinwood. You're on mute, Councillor. Sorry, th there you go. Th thank you, Karen. I have received an apology from Tom um, for tonight's meeting just to come through. Um, is there, does that mean we can not, not take the bid or do you have a formal? No, if you are happy for me to read out the proposal, uh, uh, I am happy to do that. Obviously, what I won't be able to do is answer any questions that you may have. You, you've got two options really, is, is one for me to read it out. I have already done that for another ward, so that, that's fine. Or the other um, uh, option you could do is to defer it until the round two or I, defer I, it to another ward for a meeting. So it, it's up to entirely up to, to yourself and other people, colleagues on the call today. Um, uh, for, for my view, uh, uh, colleagues listening, I, I, I would be happy for Karen to read out that proposal. Um, whilst I've not been involved in the development of it, I am aware of uh, the work that they've done in um, in Katie Road around the table tennis table. 
Um, so potentially I uh, you know, might be able to give some information and therefore recuse myself from things if necessary, Karen. Um, but hopefully um, uh, I um, yeah, hopefully colleagues will just be happy with your reading out of his proposal uh, and, and that should be sufficient for, um, for, for the information that people require. No, that's that's fine. Do people just want to indicate whether they're happy for that um, to take place? Either use the hand, uh, the icon or fantastic. OK, in that case, I will uh, read it out. It is quite a straightforward one because it is for it's his for equipment. Um, the proposal, as I said, has come from Sully Oak Community Development Trust. And this is for the purchase of a table tennis uh, table for Katie Road um, play area. Um, they want, uh, obviously, because it's ex an external table, it has to be uh, pretty robust. Um, they're, they're, this will be a community facility intended to act as a catalyst for sports participation and involvement of local people in sport. It will build uh, community participation and engagement in a place where there is very little. It will act as a catalyst to improve the whole play area and build local networks. Um, the Commonwealth Games 2022 is the first time para table tennis will be at the event. So this is an opportunity to offer uh, the table out to wheelchair players. It'll be a great opportunity to introduce and promote this aspect of the games. UK table tennis are supportive of this project. It will promote sport in the community and get local people active. Existing models from the PING project some 10 years ago demonstrate that putting open access tables in public spaces has real community building value. Uh, community participation will be possible with open access to local community and the opportunity presented for community events, uh, learning to play days and coaching for, for children. We ran a pilot with a self-funded table and have learned lessons from that use. If supported from this fund, the high quality table can be used by all members of the community as and when they want to play. It brings people and neighbours together and allows people to meet each other and provide um, a focus. If we get one good table funded, this allows us to do more in Birmingham potentially. It's not just a good idea, this project builds community by bringing local people together. Uh, it stimulates more activity in a neglected area in, uh, the, in the Sully Oak, Katie Road area, and we could do the same in other places if supported. The amount of grant that they are seeking is £3,000. They also, within the proposal itself, um, they have they have had some already spoke to local uh, residents so, uh, who have um, put their comments uh, as part of the uh, proposal. Um, and I, I, I will read a, a couple of these out. Uh, this table tennis table at Katie Road play area has proved a valuable addition to the local community. I have had many a game against quite a number of different people from all ages. I see others playing as I walk past on my way to the local shops. An outside table one, one can play whenever one likes is brilliant. Thanks for providing this facility. Uh, my father was a table tennis champion. I haven't played for 50 years. This table has got me back into playing with neighbours and friends on Katie Road. Um, the table tennis has been a great addition to the local community, bringing all age groups together. It has been inspiring to see the effects of this project in Sully Oak. Uh, the table tennis facility at Katie Road play area has made a real difference to the community. It is really popular and has brought people out of their houses and enabled them to meet neighbours. Um, so uh, the reason why, because uh, they have one table, this is a, a second table, which is a, a better quality table and with um, uh, a greater cost for installation because they will be changing the surface that the table is actually uh, in as, as well. 
So uh, £3,000 may sound quite a lot for the purchase, but it is to uh, lay that play carpet underneath um, as well on this on this um, uh, this table. So that's that's the proposal. Uh, Rosie, I can see you've got your hand up. Have you got a, a comment or and or a question? You're on mute, Rosie. Sorry, my hand had been left up from the previous occasion. Oh, okay. Never Sorry. mind. You can say something if you want, though, Rosie. Oh, it sounds a lovely idea. Um, very good. Thank you. Okay. okay. Sorry, Rosie. Uh, is there anybody else who'd like to add, uh, ask a question or or a comment at this stage? Uh, Chris. Hi, just like to know, is, is this a gateway into other things uh, happening in, in Selly Oak or is it a one off, you know, for, you know, that won't be sort of followed up in any other way? I think in it, the bit I did read out on the proposal did say that they have run some uh, uh, pilot coaching, but once they uh, are able to install another table that it would enable other things to happen there as well and they would encourage you know they would take on more um coaching okay thank you okay are there any other comments as a bit of a table tennis addict myself um I, uh, and having got an outdoor uh, table tennis table at Sturchley, and I know uh, Joan has got one at uh, Bourneville, um, it is a great way, particularly outdoors, to enable activities to still carry on without actually having to go into a, a centre and perhaps having to play pay for that uh, uh, usage. I'm just going to have a look at the the yeah outdoor chess as well yes i think it, it it sort of acts as a trigger and a catalyst doesn't it and for other things that perhaps could be done externally uh, as well okay if there aren't any more uh, uh questions i would like to ask if uh, joan you wouldn't mind um just hopping off from the from the call uh, it should only take about five minutes, so you'll um, uh, you'll be able to return. I would say at um, it's nearly nearly six at um, five past six. I should think we will have we will have finished then. If if you don't mind, that's absolutely fine, Harold. And um, can I just? My husband is sitting here. Is he allowed to vote? <laughs> if he's not a trustee. Then he's absolutely and a resident. He's absolutely entitled um, to vote. I am a trustee, so you're I'm not. not you won't be able to vote because it'll be a um, a conflict of of interest. Thank you. Thank you. O okay. Just wait for Joan to to temporarily leave the meeting. Somebody else with it. Colin, you've got your hand up. I need to leave as well. You just do that by hanging off, do you? Uh, yes, if you just leave the meeting and then if you then dial back in, in, in at about five past, I'm, I think we will have finished. OK, thank you. If you are a trustee, uh, and I have had two people who've, uh, uh, Councillor Clem, Clements and Magdalene, you can stay on the call. Don't worry, you don't have to dial off and dial back in, but you, you won't be able to um, vote on, on this occasion for this particular project. So uh, I'm just going to do this by by simple hands up rather than any any other way. So those who are local residents and able to vote, could you either put your camera on and raise your hand or use the icon on screen to, to put a hand up, please? So those in favour of this 
proposal. Thank you. I'm just going to scroll down, make sure I haven't missed anybody. John, you're very welcome to uh, vote. I will do a pricey. This proposal is for a thousand pounds for Friends of Bourneville Park to be able to, in this first instance, um, repair their their a hut on the park so they can are able to use it to have uh, celebrate a, a Commonwealth Games activities for local people nearer the games. So it's a thousand pounds. So you're very, very uh, welcome to 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 um, uh, vote on that particular project. Um, Karen, can I just come in here very quickly? I see a question in the chat that is it possible to say yes to both projects? It's, we're not choosing between the two projects here, are we? You're not it's choosing both between, both. it's not an either or, it's a both. You can say yes to both projects. As I mentioned, there is a 22,000 in the pot, so you have enough money to um, vote for both projects. So yes, it's not an either either or. So if people have still got their their hands up, that's great. And John, I don't know whether that that's enough information for you, whether you want to vote or not. Either put your can camera just, on, put can, your hand just, up. Uh, can I just uh, say something then? Uh, of course can, you can. Because in the bit that I did here, um, the present uh, presenter of the thousand pound one was talking about wanting to do something and that this hut would be used for something they were doing later. Now, are we committed to funding what they're going to do later? In other words, um, no, they will put in another proposal into round two for okay. that. And that's a, that's a separate thing. Right. Yeah. So I support this. Thank you. Is there anybody who uh, is not supportive of this proposal? If you can all put your hands down, so not to confuse me, uh, for the yeses. And anybody who is not in favour? Thank you. And then for the second project, this is for the purchase of a high quality table tennis table to go into Katie Road play area. If you are in favour, could you please uh, raise your hands? Karen, it's Liz Clements here. Is it correct to say that if we can vote on this one if we're not involved in, the, in any way with the organisation? Of course, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. I've, yeah, I've voted in favour of that then, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was only the first one yourself and, and Magdalene couldn't vote on. Great, thanks for clarifying. Lovely, thank you very much. You can... Um, uh, Put all your hands down. Thank you. That's grand. So just to conclude that both these proposals uh, that you have recommended as, as residents will go forward to be signed off formally. Um, uh, they have to be signed off in, just in terms of the money uh, uh, with uh, uh, senior officers. Um, uh, and that will be done uh, uh, shortly. 
So that from my maths, that means that you've got 18, about just over 18,000 left for the second round. The second round is now open. The closing date for that second round is the end of November, and there will be another one of these participative decision making in January. Um, once I've finished talking and you've gone on to the other agenda items, I will put the link for the application forms for that second round and also the link to uh, Birmingham Community Matters who are supporting NDSU with um, helping community organisations who've got a germ of an idea and just need a bit of support as to how they put that as a proposal. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I'm going to hand that now back over to um, Councillor Winrod for the rest of the meeting. Thank you, Karen, and thank you um, for doing that so well and facilitating that. That was uh, really, really good to hear those projects coming out of our community. And really, thank you everyone for participating in that. And I think, Karen, that challenge there of um, getting some, you know, encouraging community organisations across Bonford and Cottage Ward to put in for that second round uh, so that we can again come back to, to a similar meeting and um, uh, and have uh, some uh, good and exciting bids to about you know from the community that matters to the community uh, in the way that we've heard tonight so um thank you ever so much Karen for participating in that for facilitating that for us and thank you to everyone for participating and particularly thanks to those that have come and given uh, to put those bids together uh, and to, to Joan for, and Colin for presenting tonight and obviously um to uh, Tom who isn't here but who submitted that bid um, so thank you to everyone involved. Um, colleagues thank you Karen I mean you're most welcome obviously to stay with us um, we would uh, you know if there is information you want to put in the chat we're always grateful for your support for these meetings um, but I will now take us on to the next agenda item uh, which will be so if everyone again can go on mute and uh, put their screens off um, I will introduce uh, our, um, here, go back to my agenda um, to Natalie Stewart, who is our Senior Public Health Officer at Birmingham City Council, to tell us what the current situation is with the pandemic. I think there's been a lot of uh, debate about what's happening, what's going to happen this winter, uh, some of the challenges ahead. We know that the, the virus is still circulating in our city, um, but um, and it would be great to hear from you uh, to, to understand what, what the situation is and uh, what the, what, what's going on about it, really. Um, over to you please, uh, um, Natalie, if that's OK with you. Yes, thank you very much, councillors, and thank you, everybody, for having me at your meeting this evening. I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the data in Birmingham currently. So in the seven days leading up to the 3rd of September, there were 3,023 cases in Birmingham. This is equivalent to a case rate of 264.8 per 100,000. This is down 11.3% compared to the 3,407 cases the previous week, which was equivalent to 298.4 per 100,000 population. Birmingham's case rate is ranked 165 out of 214 local authorities in the UK. Cases were highest in the 20 to 39 year age group at 37% followed by the 40 to 59 year age group at 26 percent and the 0 to 19 age group at 25 percent. The white ethnic group counted for most cases at 52 percent, followed by Asian ethnic groups at 19 percent. And this has been the trend for several weeks. So moving on to Bourneville and Cottage Ward, um, for the seven day period of the 28th of August to the 3rd of September, the Bourneville and Cottage Ward saw 63 cases reported, which is equivalent to a rate of 352.7 per 100,000 population, compared to 264.8 for Birmingham. The ward ranks 21st out of 69 wards, with Sutton Mere Green being the highest, the, the first highest, sorry, with a rate of 446.43 and Bournebrook and Selly Park is the lowest, 69th, with a rate of 113.83. As of the 6th of September, there were 20 COVID-19 champions in the Bourneville and Cottage Ward. The pattern of cases, the rates, has seen an overall drop in Bourneville and Cottage, although at an overall slower rate than the rest of Birmingham. 
Between July and September, there was a 5.8% fall in case rates to 361.3 per 100,000 compared to 36.5, that's 277.7 per 100,000 in Birmingham. I'm now going to move on to testing. Lateral flows. Everyone is still encouraged to do a lateral flow test twice a week, and these can be picked up at pharmacies, some supermarkets, or ordered online through www.gov.uk order coronavirus rapid lateral flow tests. If you have symptoms such as a high temperature, a new continuous cough, or the loss or change of taste and smell, self-isolate and book a PCR test. You can book an appointment online or call 119 or go to a local mass testing site. The closest one I think to your ward is um, Birmingham Lifford House Car Park, which is on Ford House Lane, Sturchley B33BN. Continue to isolate until your test results come back and your household members must isolate too. If you receive a negative test, you can all resume normal activity if you are well enough. If your test is positive, you must all isolate for 10 days, with day one being either the first day of symptoms or the positive test date. Vaccination. So all of those aged 80 years and over, for Birmingham, we have 91%. Bourneville and Cotteridge, 95.4%. All those aged 75 years and over, 91.7% for Birmingham and 95.9% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All those 70 years of age and over, 91.5% for Birmingham, 95.6% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. Clinically extremely vulnerable individuals have a vaccination rate of 84.8% in Birmingham and 91.4% in your ward. I'm happy to send through um, a report. Um, would you like me to go through all of the age groupings for you? Would that be preferable? Oh, I'll, just coming, that, that would be very helpful, I think. No problem, I'm happy to do that for you. Um, so we've now got all of those aged 65 years and over, 90.3% for Birmingham, 94.6% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. COVID at risk, 76.6% for Birmingham, 87.2% for Cotteridge, um, sorry, Bourneville and Cotteridge. All of those 60 years of age and over for Birmingham, 88.7%. And for Bourneville and Cotteridge, 93.9. 55 years and over, 86.6% for Birmingham, 92.6% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All of those aged 50 years and over, 84.6% and 91.2% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All of those aged 40 years and over, 79.1% for Birmingham, and 87.6% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All of those aged 30 years and over, 72.4% for Birmingham, 83.5% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All of those aged 18 years and over, 66.8% for Birmingham and 78.8% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. And finally, all of those aged 16 and over, 65.5% for Birmingham, and 78.1% for Bourneville and Cotteridge. All adults over the age of 18 are encouraged to have their vaccination. If you have been offered your vaccine already and you've changed your mind, please contact your GP to book in or visit one of the walk-in vaccination centres. Second dose is now being offered after eight weeks and you may be able to bring your vaccination forward. You can visit NHS sorry, www.nhs.uk to book your vaccination. Um, and there is a local vaccination site um, in Sturchley and Sully Oak. So if you bear with me, I'll get you the details for those.
sorry to keep you all waiting. Not a problem at all, Natalie. That was a great presentation, and thank you ever so much for coming and speaking to us. I see we've already got a question in the chat for you, which is whether you're aware of the uh, obviously the Queen Elizabeth Hospital has been one of the key kind of uh, centres, medical response centres to the pandemic. Yes. Um, and we, one of the colleagues, has asked whether we know uh, how it's doing in terms of capacity. Unfortunately, I don't know how it's doing in terms of capacity, but if everybody is OK with me taking a note of that question, I'm more than happy to send the answer through as soon as I have that. So if you bear with me, I'll take note of the question first and then I'll relay information on where um, you can walk in and get a vaccination. Is that OK? That would be absolutely brilliant. Um, Natalie, I, th I think one of the things from, and I know you're taking a note while you talk, so forgive me for asking my question as you do say. Um, but obviously, we still some of those younger age groups. We're still seeing in our ward. We're doing, you know, more people are, than the than the average across the city are have had their double vaccinations. Um, but is there what are we doing to reach out to to younger people that that twenty percent that's yet to have their vaccine? It, 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 their double, you know, apply for their vaccine. Uh, what's the council doing to reach out to those? Because I know a number of residents have contacted me and with concern about um, you know obviously going into spaces uh, and making sure they're safe. And obviously, if we've still got a, a tranche of people that haven't yet had the vaccine, they could catch uh, and pass on to other, others who are vulnerable or, or clinically shielding. OK, we do have COVID um, champions in the area, and I will move on to that um, a bit later through the presentation. I'm not done yet, everybody. I'm really sorry. Um, the COVID-19 uh, champions are people in local to the area who live and work in the area um, who are encouraging vaccination uptake. We're also doing um, some myth busting around what the vaccine is and what the vaccine isn't. And we're hoping that that will help the young generation make an informed decision about taking up the, um, the vaccination. If you would like some more information, I'm happy to find out um, through the COVID-19 um, champions in the area, what exactly they're doing to target younger people? I think I think I certainly think that would be interesting to, to know and also what role the, the wider community can play in, in helping those COVID champions. Uh, Councillor Clements, you've got your hand raised. Um, Natalie, are you happy to, for us to just take a little break and ask to take some questions? Is that your uh, presentation or do you have more to say afterwards? Um, I do have more to say, but I'm happy to take questions as we go along. Um, I know that sometimes the moment can feel very lost if questions are kept to the end so I'm happy to take them as we go along. Well I will I'll keep an eye on the hands raised so if you want to ask a question of Natalie please raise your hand. Councillor Clements. It was really just a comment just in terms of outreach to younger people um, I'm aware that um, young people at Dame Elizabeth Cadbury School have been doing some excellent promotional work they've done some videos um, targeted at um, their own age group and encouraging them to the vaccine and those were widely shared on um, social media and with you know with the help of the Birmingham Youth Service and I think you know, that is an excellent initiative because I think you know, that the, the best advocates you know, for, for getting vaccinated as a young person are, um, um, are other young people so I think you know, we should really congratulate them for what they've done you know, and that, that school's been leading the way. I agree entirely I think it's so important that we have representation amongst young people um, I'm not casting any aspersions here on anybody other than myself but Young people don't necessarily want to listen to somebody old like me. They want to hear it from a younger person and to have that representation and to be seen and be heard and be represented is so important. So I think that's a fantastic initiative by um, Dame Cabri, um School. Is everybody happy for me to discuss um, walk-in centre locations? That would be really helpful. I, I'm aware, probably if we try to end in about five minutes this this session to bring on the next one, Natalie, uh, it, would that be okay with you? That's absolutely fine. Okay, so um, we have Pfizer vaccination site in Gibbons Road in the Selly Oak area. We have Riverbrook Medical Centre offering the Pfizer vaccination in Sturchley, and we also have. Um, Oh, again, it's Riverbrook Medical Centre. 
um, for some reason that's listed twice and I think that's because the hours are slightly different but I'm happy to send a link around to where you can find this information. Okay, restrictions. Um, the step four web page is something that I'll send around for everybody um, to have a look at. That's what the current restrictions are at the moment. Um, again, I know that youngsters at the moment are being, well, people aged 12 to 15, sorry, in England are going to be offered a first dose of COVID-19 vaccine um, starting next week. And boosters will also be rolling out next week for the most clinically vulnerable. Further details on deployment will be um, sent out in due course. And that's it for my update. Thank you so much, Natalie. That's really, really appreciated and, and really clear. And um, if there's any links that you need to share with everybody, please do put them in the chat. And um, in, in, you know, in, in, during the next part of the discussion, I'm very happy for you to stay on to put that in there. And I guess if anybody needs to um, uh, for it, for that information, do get in touch with Liz and myself, and we'll get those to you, Natalie. Uh, if there are any questions that have not yet been up, you know, people suddenly think they'd have liked to have asked when they um when when they leave the meeting colleagues i will um allow a, a couple of minutes for any points that anybody wants to raise is anybody does anybody want to ask any questions natalie or raise any issues related to the item and i'm not seeing any hands raised um so i am going to say oh john you've turned your camera on did you want to raise something well yes uh, if I heard right, there seems to be a bit of a contrast between, on the one hand, having higher than average rates of infection, um, and but also higher rates of vaccination. Uh, if I'm right in that contrast, how do you explain it? Good question, John. Thank you. Natalie. OK. I think the easiest way of explaining it is that Unfortunately, even if you have been um, vaccinated, either first dose or both doses, um, you can still get COVID. It's still very much a problem. Um, so obviously, the more we test of something, the more we're going to find it. Um, but we're still encouraging everybody to get their vaccinations. Um, so I hope that explains the contrast. So the more we look, the more we'll find, but also, um, having the COVID vaccinations doesn't make you immune to having COVID. It just means that it lessens the effects and will hopefully stop you from going into hospital with it. Uh, I, I'm very much in favour of vaccinations, don't get me wrong. Um, and, um, and I'm very much in favour of testing, but maybe do we do more testing in this area? Or is it that we have more young people in the area? Um, I mean, I'm, don't go to a great length on this, but I'm just slightly puzzled. Thanks, John. Natalie, that's a good, what we'd term a follow-up question in in our council terms and terminology. Um, if you're able to answer that, and then we'll move on to the next item, or if anybody else wishes to raise. No problem. So. I can't really explain why there are more um, why there are more tests and more vaccinations in the area. That is something that I can explore with our test and trace team for you, and I can send over some information from them once I've got it, if that's OK with everybody. Thank you, Natalie. That would be great. Cheryl, I noticed you've turned your camera on. Did you want to come in on this item? Sorry, I'm just having a few audio issues. Um, one of the questions I was interested in was, were there any trends in relation to adults who've not had vaccinations and young people? Um, but listening to some of the conversations around um, young people's right to choose, etc. And I just wonder if that was showing up as a trend or is it a little too early to see any of that? And I suppose I'm just curious about how others, um, particularly those working with young people, might be able to support some of those challenging conversations. Okay. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I don't have access to the data, um, mm. unfortunately. That's something our test and trace team would look at. 
but I would be interested as well to see if there are any trends to see if we're um, spotting any any discrepancies between uptake between our older population and our younger population and that's certainly something I will raise with the team because I think that would be important and useful information for everybody to have actually. Um, I'm really sorry that was the first part of your question. Um, would you mind just going over the second part? I suppose that was the key tenet of it because I suppose my question once we understand a bit more about that then others you know I'm thinking of people that work with young people or in community settings that's where we may be able to be helpful in supporting some of those conversations but without a better understanding of the trend it might be difficult to just launch into um, having those explorations with families young people and parents. Of course. Uh Thanks, Cheryl. And, and uh, just uh, so, uh, Natalie, if you can take that uh, that suggestion away, how do we kind of provide support, you know, support and guidance, perhaps for those that work with um, young people? Um, you know, I think that would be a, a really useful thing uh, to, to to bring to the attention of our many community organisations in the Bonville and Cottage Ward. Um, so, colleagues, um, can I thank Natalie? Because um, I'm aware of time. Um, can I thank Natalie for coming along tonight and giving us that excellent update? Um, and say that you know we we probably I, I'm hoping you know I always hope that we won't need to invite you back because obviously um you know the pandemic will finally you know finally go away but I I doubt that that will be the case so I I'm sure that if if the pandemic does continue or if there are an increase over the winter and um, which hopefully there won't be um I'm I, you know we we would we would invite you or your team to come back to us so thanks ever so much for that presentation I really do appreciate that and as I say colleagues if you do need to ask any additional questions you forgot to ask. Or if you need to find any information out from Natalie or our team, please do email myself and or Liz, and we'll get your questions to Natalie. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Natalie. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks very much. So, colleagues, moving on to the next agenda item um, is uh, the police update from the local police team. Um, now, I have uh, a statement to read on behalf of um, the, uh, the the new sergeant in um, in uh, in Bonville Ward police ward. So the Bourneville ward in terms of the police um, uh, arrangements covers Bourneville, um, the, that is the, the Bourneville village, um, the um, Bourneville works, May, the Macefield, um, Cottridge and Maryvale road areas and um, and then goes on into, uh, into uh, Sturchley as well. It doesn't include uh, the very top of our ward uh, which is the Katie Road area and the Langley's Road area. They are in the Selly Oak Police team. Um, though I do think actually this new sergeant does it does work across both Selly Oak and Bourneville. So um, I think when he is able to come to us, um, he'll he'll set that out for us. And it also doesn't include that small part of um, what was formerly the Northfield Ward on the old council boundaries back in 2018 around Wines Point and 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 uh, um, the David's area. So given that, I will read out uh, the response from uh, uh, um, uh, from Sergeant Sankey. So uh, he says, um, he gives his apologies for not attending tonight's meeting. Um, this meeting has fallen on rest days and um, it was on short notice as he's new to the role. Uh, the, as I say, he's just, uh, he's just taken on that role. He's the new Sergeant covering both the Selly Oak and Bourneville Ward at the moment. He's 16 staff at his disposal in an ideal world. But in reality, with staff sickness, annual leave, courses and abstractions, he normally operates with around seven PCs and three PCSOs across both Bourneville and Selly Oak police wards. He then utilises the staff to patrol areas of high crime or where spikes in calls to service have occurred. Clearly, this means the majority of his patrols are in areas that he's aware where the public can make contact with the police. With that in mind, he asks everyone, his ask of everyone is to contact the police when required. He's aware that there is a delay in the answering on the 101 service and would like those that can to utilise the online reporting on the West Midlands Police, Police website. This links through to a chat programme where you can report any offences or issues. If required, that person can then, the individual reporting to the police can create a log and that will then also come through to his team. In relation to crime, we've seen a recent rise, sadly, in violence offences, including involving under 25 year olds and as a force have set up Operation Guardian to try to look into this. One such incident, as I'm sure uh, many members on this call will be aware, occurred in Cottridge around three weeks ago, where a group of young males were chasing two other young males. This was a targeted incident that had been going on earlier in the day. This was not a random attack on people who knew nothing about it. 
The incident was scary and horrific for those that witnessed it, but please rest assured it is not the norm. We've made a, they have made an arrest in this case and that person is in prison awaiting trial. Other inquiries are ongoing and the police will continue to investigate. It's also come to Sergeant Sankey's attention that begging and shoplifting in Cottage is now a problem for the trade, is, is, a, is a problem for the traders. Uh, they have an arrest plan of a well-known offender and would hope to give an update in, on this in the next meeting. They've set up a project with two officers to monitor and manage the begging situation and they can utilise civil interventions to manage these people, but need to ensure we put plans in place to assist the reasons for the offending, such as housing support and drug referrals. They're working on this, but it isn't a short term solution. His ask of the community is to stop giving these people money or items of food drink. He states that they are not homeless individuals. Uh, they are drug addicts who are using the money gained to fund their drug abuse. If he can get the support of the community to stop giving these people things, they will have to move elsewhere or address their problems. He then says, if there are is other issues, please make contact with the local team and they will try their best to assist you. Please use, again, he reiterates, please use the 101 system or the online reporting on the West Midlands Police website to inform him and his team of the problems or indeed speak to your local officers when you see them. So that's from our new police sergeant who will uh, do his best to be with us for the next uh, ward forum. Uh, that we have, which uh, probably will happen either late uh, this year or early next year. So, uh, colleagues, I will take stop. I mean, Councillor Clements and I had uh, uh, um, supported a residents and traders meeting in Cottridge uh, with Sergeant Sankey and the and, and PCSA Paul Blackford, who many on this call will know um, earlier this week. So, I am happy to take any points that colleagues may wish to raise and make sure they get to Sergeant Sankey. Um, but otherwise, I'll move on to the next item. So if I leave a minute for anybody to raise their hand on the uh, issue around police, uh, policing in the ward, and, um, and, and I, 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 I'll take those questions and do my best if, to answer them, or if I can't answer them, to take them down and make sure that they get um, sent to the policing team. Colleagues, over to you. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Oh, I am seeing a hand raised. I'm seeing Cyril raise his hand. Cyril, please please turn on your camera and your microphone uh, and, and make your point or ask your question. I am I'm very concerned about the lack of speed enforcement on the A38. I use it regularly and I'm always being passed when I'm doing 30 miles an hour and seeing everybody else disappearing ahead of me. We need some fierce enforcement to get the message home that 20 means 20. End of story. Thank you, Cyril. And I know you've written to me and Councillor Clements on that issue. And we're absolutely supportive of that, uh, of your statements there. Councillor Clements, I, I, you may wish to come in on this. Just very quickly, because I'm aware that um, Maria and her colleague are, are waiting patiently to talk about cl the climate emergency. But I agree with Cyril on you know, that stretch of the Bristol Road. We need to, we need enforcement, but enforcement is done by the police. And I think one thing I just wanted to draw to everyone's attention is that the speed limit is through Bourneville on the, on Bristol Road has been reduced from 40 miles an hour to 30 um, miles an hour um, recently as part of the active travel measures. And that was a result of residents getting in contact with us um, and, and talking about you know, their um, concerns about you know, um, racing along there. So it's, it's a matter that we debated at council um, yesterday. And there's also you know, the um, push really to look at you know, whether we can get some um, average speed um, cameras um, um, on, a, on a range of extra roads across Birmingham, but that's all a matter of resources. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Cyril, did you want to come back on that or did you want to raise any other points? Uh, no, there's nothing else to say to that. Just press on and get on with it. Thank you, Cyril. I, I know that Councillor Clements in particular is, is really uh, taking up that 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 issue, and uh, we will continue to push on that. Um, thank you, everyone, for that item. I then uh, move on to our next item, um, which is the climate emergency and the council's response. And Maria Dunn, head of development policy from Birmingham City Council, uh, is going to join us to give a presentation. Maria, I'm aware that I'm slightly running a bit slow on time, and I want to make sure I can give our final speaker a bit at the time as well. So, if we need to keep this item roughly around 15 minutes, would that be okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. I've just got a quick presentation to go through just to, to bring people who perhaps aren't um, aware of her um, the work that we've been undertaking up to speed with, with what we've been doing um, and then happy to take any questions. Um, I will introduce as well my colleague uh, Ellie Crook who's joined us this evening. Um, Ellie's been supporting me on the route to zero work 
um, and has kindly offered to come along this evening to um, partly to get an insight into what happens, but also to help take any questions. So if I share my screen. Hopefully you can see a PowerPoint presentation. It's coming up slowly for me. I've got a blank screen at the moment. There, I've got your um, Teams chat at the moment. There you are. That's, that, that works. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it, Maria. OK, I'm just. Going to put that into slideshow mode. Um, so hopefully you can see um, that more clearly now. So. Um, I'm Maria Dunn, Head of Development Policy, um, currently leading on our Route Zero programme for the Council. So tonight I'm just going to give you an overview of what we, what, what the work we've been undertaking um, and the content of our action plan and look at some of the opportunities for engagement. So broadly, um, the journey so far, the action plan and the opportunities for engagement. So Birmingham City Council declared a climate emergency in June 2019 and it was agreed that a new council priority would be added to the corporate plan, which was Birmingham will be a city that takes the leading role in tackling climate change. In response to that, the council adopted some early actions which were um, designed to be sort of quick win projects and the basis for um, taking forward carbon reduction. Um, we also commissioned consultants and thesis that was back in January 2020 to undertake an assessment of where our carbon emissions come from and what we can do to address those and that report um, which is available online for those of you who are interested in reading the detail um, informed the interim council report which was taken to full council in September 2020 and that set out some further updates on the work that was undertaken it set out the anthesis report and it led on to a report going to full council in january 2021 which set out an action plan and the action plan um i'll cover in some more detail but essentially it's um a first action oh, yeah. plan and i can just interrupt you just very quickly um colleagues have put that they can see both the next slide and your notes rather than the full screen of just the slide itself so would you be able to just put it on Slide only. Uh, we've still got your next slide and, and, and notes there for some reason or other. I don't know. Um, I think it's the display settings and making sure it only sends. Um, it, I think perhaps I that finished. one down the bottom. Sorry about this. I just obviously uh, don't want to give the game away as you as you as you kind of prepare us for that. Um, from current slide, maybe. I think it still seems to be coming up with all three um, display settings in the corner. I was say come out of it. I've only ever clicked the button at the bottom. You know, if you come out of it now, and then um, I've only ever hit the little icon right at the bottom of PowerPoint. Try that. Thanks, Eleanor. That's really helpful advice. Um, um, so you see where you got the zoom in and out, the button to the left of the minus sign. Yeah, that one. No, OK, it's still doing it. Not a clue. No, Sorry. it's one of those ones. I think it might be display settings. No, one? I don't. There yes, you are. Done it. You've done it. Brilliant. That's Excellent. It. Well done, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Now, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, no problem. It's so I think now I've swapped my um, display. So if you can see the side of my head, that's because my camera's on the laptop that doesn't have my notes on it. <laughs> um, so the action plan um, essentially focuses on um, seven key priority, six key priority areas. Um, the first of which is new build housing. So the new build housing um, element of the action plan is about how we can raise the standards of new build um, and prevent retrofitting at a later date. And it looks at our planning policies um, and how we can improve those to require higher standards at the outset. Um, but within the context of we don't just have free reign, we are governed by um, national policy and the need to get through what's called an examination in public and demonstrate that our policies are viable and deliverable. Um, and also looking at the specification to which we build our own municipal housing trust homes um, and how we can push that forward. And we've got a trial scheme which will build to passive house standard. Um, 
to to learn from and to ascertain whether it's possible to apply that across all of our um, new build schemes. Um, on retrofit of housing stock, this essentially focuses on um, retrofitting the council's own housing stock. Uh, we have a significant number of homes um, and retrofitting those would both obviously reduce our carbon emissions, but also it would provide that um, it would provide those supply chains and those skills to um, enable the rollout of re retrofit more widely and local residents being able to see retrofit schemes that have happened and the, the benefits of those and how they work um, will improve confidence in retrofit. So it would be able to um, be scaled out to um, the wider community. Um, transport and electric vehicle charging. This is a really significant area. There's um, transport is a significant source of emissions, focusing on moving journeys from the private car, particularly shorter journeys, can significantly reduce carbon emissions. So this element includes a package of measures to facilitate walking, cycling and public transport use, particularly within the city centre. The Birmingham Transport Plan sets out much more detail of this, but essentially um, one of the um, one of the schemes that we've been consulting on at the moment looks at um, segments in the city centre, so discouraging driving around the city centre and encouraging that those other transport modes, things like walking, cycling, um, use of the cycle hire scheme, use of the scooter hire scheme. Um, and then we're also looking at the electric vehicle charging provision. So we've got a current programme underway to roll out 394 fast and rapid charge points across the city. Um, and then following on from that, we're taking a strategy to Cabinet later this year, which will set out provision beyond that initial rollout um, up to 2030. And that will be responsive to um, market demand. So we could see as many as 9,000 EV charging points across the city. And the priority areas there will be people who are least able to be self-sufficient in terms of electric vehicle charging. So those people that don't have access to off street parking um, and, and are not able to just have a charging point installed at their own home. Um, we have a section on waste and this focuses on waste reduction, but also looking at how we manage waste in the longer term um, and looking at all waste arising. So not just our household waste, but all of the waste that's produced across the city. Um, including commercial waste. And then energy looks at how we reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. Um, for example, looking at how we heat our homes in the future linked to the retrofit programme will be a significant area of work around energy. And then the natural environment. So the natural environment looks at how we use um, the natural environment to offset carbon emissions, for example, planting trees to absorb carbon, but it also looks more holistically at um, the natural environment and looks at those things like attractive um, transport routes, walking and cycling corridors, and ensuring that recreation space is available locally. So the council also has a number of actions um, in terms of changing the way we work to um, respond to the climate emergency. So we're increasing the resource around the climate emergency. We have a, um, a new Route to Zero Assistant Director who will be joining the Council soon um, and we are creating, we're looking at creating a team um, around Route to Zero and that's looking at um, some of our existing posts, but also looking at the creation of new posts and we'll be taking a report to Cabinet in October on that. We have the new ways of working programme, um, which will reduce the need to travel. This isn't primarily about carbon reduction, this is primarily about the Council um, looking at how we work, the space we need, all of the issues around the COVID-19 um, pandemic and how we, um, how we change and adapt to be a more flexible, agile workforce. Um, but with that will come carbon saving emissions, primarily from transport. We have um, an extensive programme of partnership working, um, working with partners such as the Combined Authority and the GBS Local Enterprise Partnership and Chamber of Commerce to look at how we shape and influence what happens across the wider city um, and how we can deliver things that are um, 
beyond beyond the council's control and um, we can work with our partners to, to deliver those things like influencing businesses um working with chamber of commerce and the LEP um will put us in a really strong position for that we're also looking at our own procurement policies a significant chunk of the council's emissions do come from from procurement um, and services that we buy in so looking at how we can change policies around that to reduce the carbon in our supply chain um, and also in embedding embedding net zero carbon across the whole council and um, thinking about net zero carbon in the context of everything that we do as a local authority um, we have some measures there and they include things like undertaking environmental and sustainability impact assessments when we're making decisions so making sure that the decision maker has um, a complete understanding of the impact of the decision they're making on sustainability and carbon emissions and also a programme of staff training to to broaden the knowledge base within the organisation um, and make sure that everyone has a basic understanding of, of carbon emissions and climate change and um, can apply that to their activities. So in terms of um, community engagement, the Route to Zero Citizens Assembly or Climate Assembly, as it's um, been referred to, offers an opportunity to get involved with Route to Zero. Um, if you're interested in that, um, Ellie can provide more details on how to sign up. We've got a meeting coming up on the 6th of October. Um, that's going to be our first hybrid meeting. So it will take place in person at University of Birmingham, but also with an opportunity to join online. Um, and all of our individual projects, um, when I say individual projects, we see Route to Net Zero very much as a portfolio of diff lots of different projects that will all reduce our carbon emissions. Um, they will all, or, or a lot of those programmes will undertake public consultation. So for example, the Birmingham Development Plan, which I touched upon earlier, will have a number of rounds of public consultation and that will give local communities the opportunity to influence our planning policies. Um, but also things like the electric vehicle charging strategy will go out to consultation um, things like Birmingham Transport Plan, which has already been out to consultation. So as we go through and introduce new measures um, and new policies, there'll be lots of opportunities for engagement on those individual policies. And we will present annual reports to full council outlining progress and they will begin in January 2022. And if people are interested in those, they are all publicly available and you can um, attend council meetings or listen in online. So that's just a quick overview of, of what we're doing, um, but happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. No, that, that is, is brilliant, Maria. Really appreciate that and really appreciate doing that so swiftly. And uh, and, and, and thank you for, for doing that um, in a very timely manner. Um, Colleagues, uh, I think we've got a, a couple of minutes there for any questions you have of Maria or any points you'd like to make. Uh, please, I noticed that um, Ellen has been putting a lot of stuff in the chat. Do click on those links and have a read. Um, and if you can, uh, yeah, if colleagues can raise their hands uh, uh, if they wish to ask a question or make a point uh, for Maria. John, you're coming in. I'm putting your screen on. That's fine. John, over to you. Thank you very much, Maria. That was very helpful and very nice, good to know about the assistant director coming. Um, it's very good that the council is giving a lead to the rest of the city, but of course we want all citizens to take part in this. Um, and what I think I'm particularly concerned about is communication. Communication has been very good about COVID, but um, what one really wants to have is sort of screens and numbers and things. Um, so that people can keep a continual chart of what's going on. And um, it often feels rather distant from where people actually are. That's my comment. You might like to respond. Thank you, John. Over to you, Maria, to respond. Yeah, I was going to say one of the, um, obviously one of the issues that we've been grappling with is, is the resources um, issue. And within the team that we're looking to create, we are suggesting that there should be a dedicated role, um, which is uh, around comms and behaviour change. So we'd expect to see that work increase. Thank you, Maria. Councillor Clements, I think you wanted to come in on this item as well. Go ahead, Liz. 
Are you still with us, Councillor Clements? I know Hi, sorry, I've momentarily you... lost um, connection from my broadband, so I'm on a, on, on a phone. Can you hear me? We can yes. indeed. Yeah, it was just to say thanks very much for, for Maria and Ellie for, for making time for us this evening to go through this massive piece of work. I know they've been working really hard on it. Um, I think one of the things that's a real asset in Bourneville and Cotteridge is the number of you know, faith and community groups that are already you know, campaigning and trying to raise you know, um, residents' awareness you know, of the, you know, the, the, the urgency you know, of the, the, the climate crisis. Um, I know that John's engaged in um, footsteps and we've got a number of Quaker organisations. So um, what are going to be the opportunities for those groups to organise, to engage by the assembly and what, what is um, being done in the run up to um, the COP26 in November? I think there's a plan to have some, you know, some um, consideration of that, of the, at the climate assembly in October. Is that right? Yeah, so there is a plan around COP26. We've got a couple of events with um, University of Birmingham that we're looking at putting on. We've got, um, we're involved with um, the arrangements for COP26 more locally, which aren't confirmed yet. Um, we have confirmed with the Carbon Battle Bus um, coming to Birmingham on the 21st of September. That will be in Centenary Square between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Um, so we will have council officers there. Um, we'll have council officers a couple of council officers there available to um to speak with members of the public and to hopefully kind of raise interest in um the climate change agenda and promote it more generally um so yeah i mean i think one of the issues with cop 26 has been that um the plans perhaps haven't progressed as quickly as they might from central government because of the um covid19 pandemic and the uncertainty around what can and can't happen um, but they are looking to push some activity out to the regions um so we are expecting to be able to do something in birmingham um during the cop period i suppose that comes back to if i may fred through you as chair yeah, i suppose that comes back to John's question about or point about communication, so it's it's fantastic to hear about those activities and the battle bus and the you know, the, the the activity that we we hope is going to happen and how will that be communicated? It will be via the, the council social media channels or um, yes, like yeah, connected. yeah, it will be on social media. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, colleagues. I don't see anybody else raise indicating they wish to speak on this item so i'll thank you thank maria and eleanor for their time giving up their time this evening to speak to us it was a really great presentation i uh, really appreciate it again if colleagues want to do follow the links that have been put in the chat uh, and do um uh, do get in touch with myself or liz if there are any issues or questions that you, uh, you think suddenly remember you'd like to ask uh, once the meeting is finished maria thank you ever so much for coming and giving a presentation today Colleagues, I will now move on to our last substantial item before uh, we do a wrap up with last minute updates um, and welcome Cheryl Garvey from Bonville Village Trust uh, to who I think join the meeting now. Cheryl, thank you ever so much for coming and joining us today and giving some update for BVT. But firstly, I wanted to take the time to congratulate you and colleagues at Sully Manor and everybody else involved from our uh, his, historic heritage assets. I think that's how we refer to them in Bonville. Uh, a, a brilliant day on Saturday. I um, really enjoyed going and meeting uh, um, very people. I, I, I got time to visit the Quakers, uh, Selling Manor and um, the boating pool and actually the, the restroom. Um, and I particularly enjoyed actually, I mean, I've been in those uh, 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 community assets before, but I got the chance to really meet those that are behind the behind the scenes. Uh, putting so much effort and so much contribution into ensuring that our community has these wonderful assets. And I know that's the case across Bourneville and Cottridge. It's not just limited to the Bourneville, the Bourneville Village Trust Estate, but I'm, I'm very grateful to all the work you guys do there. So thank you and my congratulations to everyone involved. What a brilliant day. Cheryl, over to you for a bit of an update from BVT. And John, if you could put, close your screen while Cheryl's speaking, that would be brilliant. Can't hear you too well, Cheryl. You seem to be a bit quiet. Is that any better? It, does. it fades in and out. I can. We can just about hear you. Everyone might have to turn up. All right then. I'll speak as loudly as I can, and I'll be very clear. Um, cool. You're pleased to hear I only have one update, um, really, for this quarter. Some of you may remember that last year we ran something called Well Winter. It was a anti-poverty campaign really to provide practical support for people living across our communities 
really pleased to say we'll be running it again this year um, and it will be providing fuel, food um, and support for small items um, for people who are affected with poverty over uh, from December through till probably April of next year. Um, and it will be something that will be produce, producing more information and doing some targeted support. Last year, we spent um, just over £20,000 supporting people across our communities. Um, um, and we're really pleased to be able to bring this back because it was a very practical lifeline. We're also um, paying attention to what's happening around um, the economic situation as furlough ends, um, so we are paying close attention to families and households that might start to find themselves within financial difficulty. Other than that, that's all I've got to offer. Happy to answer any questions that people have. Thank you, Cheryl, and thanks for that update. We really do appreciate that and do appreciate BBC. The Bonfer Village Trust's continued support of, of this ward forum, and I, 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 yeah, I know you, you, it's really great to have you with us uh, and really value that. Colleagues, do, has anybody on the call um, got a question for um, Cheryl at all? I think you may get away with your minute, Cheryl. I think I don't see any uh, anybody raising anything. Um, and I just again want to reiterate my, my congratulations to everyone involved in that, uh, that previous project, and, uh, and, and thank you again for this this new project, well, re renewal of a project, which will make a lot of difference in our community. Thank you ever so much, Cheryl, really do appreciate that. Colleagues, I'm away, we've got four minutes left. Um, uh, John Nightingale has written some, put some posts in the chat about his organisation Footsteps. Um, so I, I, I just wanna do, I, I'll hand over to Councillor Clements to close the meeting with a couple of updates from your local councillors, rather than me just dominate. Um, but I did want to, I did say I'd give a few minutes for anybody on the, all who wanted to raise an update from their organisation, should they wish to do so. Um, probably only got three minutes, but is anybody wanting to raise something to make everybody else aware of maybe what their community organisation is doing, or maybe there's something that they'd like to kind of explore and work with neighbours on? Um, do put your hand up if there's something that you'd like to raise. Not seeing any takers for my offer at the moment, but if you do want to take me up on it, drop something in the chat. And if uh, after Liz's update, we've still got a minute or two, I'll, I'll, I'll happily uh, allow you to come in. Uh, in which case, Councillor Clements, are you able to give an update um, from your from the councillor's update? I actually think, in view of the time, now, all I'll say, uh, all I'd say is, you know, if um, you know, we're continuing to you know, take up a number of issues, particularly a lot of planning issues at the moment. Um, uh, lots of issues around um, uh, properties going for, for HMO conversion. So um, happy to take up anyone's um, queries like that and pr provide support. Thanks, Colin, for Liz and myself with regard to council updates. I'm not hearing any. Um, I give it a few. I, it's not me trying to run away early, I promise. Um, but if uh, if any colleagues have anything to raise, not seeing anything if anyone wanted to raise any other business again i'm not seeing anything i think we're going to try and do the next one of these again it would try to hold them once a quarter um we're liz and i are also working with a number of local residents group more you know in more 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 smaller geographies within the world i mean as i said earlier we did a really good event with cottage residents and traders um uh, earlier this week we've done uh, some zoom calls with residents on the oval and the oaks we've done some work with katie road residents uh, and we're keen to do work with other any other groups of residents. I mean, uh, Neighbourhood Watch, um, can, residents associations, do let us know if you'd like us to come along to your meetings or if there are any, uh, you know, if you'd like help setting up a local community group. Um, colleagues, I'm going to therefore call the meeting to a close if I don't see any hands raised. It's just one minute to eight. Um, so I thank everyone for their attendance and uh, I hope you have a good uh, autumn. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at some point in the next quarter. Uh, and obviously probably more regularly than that throughout our day-to-day -day kind of work in our brilliant communities in Bourneville and Cottage. Uh, thank you everyone, ever so much everyone for attending. Thanks very much. Bye Goodbye everybody. all.
I think that's, is that just us left? 